What is up, YouTube? Welcome to Panfro Games. In today's video, I'm going to show you the best Pokemon to build for Terror Raid battles in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. This is an updated guide as the meta has shifted. I've learned a lot of things from tons of raid battles now, and I want to share you my 14 picks for the best Pokemon that you should build. And of course, guys, if you're new to the channel, enjoy these guides. Please leave a like, subscribe if you're new. I really appreciate it. This raid guide is gonna be broken down to three sections, physical attackers, special attackers, and supporters. All three of these roles are vital for your success in terror raid battles. It is very important that you make a couple of these Pokemon in each one of these roles. I will say that if you are always locking in Iron Hands, you are playing the game wrong. You should be using Pokemon from different roles, and not every Pokemon is going to have a fantastic matchup against every other raid Pokemon. So you want to have a bunch of other Pokemon, and also play smart. Use your cheers, attack cheers, and healing cheers are going to be very important. Even the defense tier is pretty good too. And I'm always going to recommend two support Pokemon go out in a raid battle with either two physical or two special attackers to deal damage for them. This comp is going to be universally the best. Of course, if you're playing with raid groups, then you can probably want three support mons and then one attacking mon so you can actually go for a one-shot kill, but that's going to require more coordination. For online battles, though, if you see everyone going with just an attacking Pokemon, I actually do recommend bringing a support mon so you can try to make the fight go faster and potentially seal the win. Lastly, all your Pokemon should be level 100 when you're doing raids seriously, especially for six-star raids. They need to be level 100. Also, the EV spreads are going to be pretty simple in all these Pokemon. Every Pokemon feature in this video is going to have a max HP EV spread and either go in with an attack, special attack, or a defensive option for the support mons. Let's dive into our physical attacking raid mons. And number one for me is going to be Iron Hands here. Iron Hands is a beast with the fighting and electric typing. Fantastic type combo. You can either go electric or fighting Terra, depending on what you want. You can actually make two of these, one electric and one fighting. They'll both work great at the end of the day. Of course, the ability is going to be Quark Drive, which is only ability. It gets a 1.3 times attack boost when in electric terrain or when holding a booster energy. Those two things do not stack, though, so keep that in mind. And we're going max HP, max attack with an Atom in nature to further increase our attack stat. So with the move set, we're going to do turn one belly drum, maximize our attack plus six attack, right? And then we lose 50% of our HP. Note this move fails if you're under that 50% threshold, so keep that in mind. Our second move is going to be Drain Punch. Drain Punch is going to be used on turn two to get all that HP back and do a lot of good damage. Now for our third move, you're going to want an electric move, and you have two good electric choices. You have Thunder Punch and Wild Charge. So Thunder Punch overall is going to be the better move just because it doesn't kill you, and you can get two Thunder Punches off instead of one Wild Charge, which is going to be more damage. But if the shield does go up, then you could be in a sticky situation potentially. So Wild Charge does have some merit that it has a better chance of one-shotting a raid Pokemon. But I think if you're playing with randoms and not with friends, then Thunder Punch will always be the option there. But Wild Charge does have an argument to make here. Now for the last move, there's a lot of different options. I personally like Close Combat the most because Close Combat is going to be a stab damaging move. It does twice the damage of Drain Punch, and it's going to get more kills for sure. Of course, you could just have that sustained with just Drain Punch, which is totally fine, but this is my preferred playstyle. Other good options instead of Close Combat is going to be Earthquake, so you can defeat opposing electric types, which is actually not a bad option at all. I think that's going to be the second best flex spot for this move here. You can also use Play Rough or Ice Punch. I think Ice Punch is the third best and then Play Rough is the fourth, but you can build it how you want on that last move slot. It's going to be totally up to you. And then for our item, we're going to be using the item Metronome. Metronome increases the damage of a move if we keep using it over and over, but the damage stacks will be removed if you use a different move. So pretty much, if you're just using Belly Drum and then spam Drain Punch like six times, that damage is going to rack up and you're going to do tons of damage. So that's why I recommend this item. The other item I could recommend, you could do like something like Lumberry so you don't get burned. You could also do Life Orb because Life Orb does give you a 1.3 times attack boost that does not get calculated into your stats, which is better than booster energy because turn one, we're going to be using Belly Drum, which means that booster energy was already used and it's not going to stack on top of the maximized attack, right? But because Life Orb is calculated after then you're going to actually see that damage boost. So that's why booster energy is bad on Iron Hands. Do not use Belly Drum 
booster energy on iron hands it's really a waste of an item slot next up is the other incredible physical attacking pokemon which is azumarill and i actually made two azumarills one fairy and one water terra and they both use the item shell bell shell bell is a fantastic item in raids because it will give you hp back per how much damage you did and azumarill has belly drum which means we're plus six attack hitting pokemon and we're getting tons of hp back from the damage we do so where the ability has to be huge power in both of them and you're going to do max hp max attack on both of them out of a nature so what you need to have of course is belly drum turn one belly drum then your turn two you're either going to do liquidation or play rough based on which azumarill you're trying to use so the last move is sort of the tech move here on the water one i like rain dance just to further increase the damage of water moves i rarely use it but sometimes you get the opportunity to do it and then for the fairy one you could do misty terrain but mr Terrain does not increase the damage of play rough unfortunately but helping hands actually really nice you could be more of a support azumarill in that way just in case you know i see a lot of people bring four azumarills so if you could just helping hand one azumarill who's already about to attack that's going to do a ton of damage potentially get through a one shot i do recognize that there is a glitch with huge power in play rough right now so hopefully that does get fixed because right now to play rough azumarill does have problems one shotting and the raid pokemon does recover its hp a bit after getting hit by play rough with huge power so hopefully that does get fixed soon so next up we're gonna have co ride on so co ride on i would say is like a tier physical attacker not as good as iron hands or zoom roll but if you have pokemon scarlet you might as well make this guy now for its item you could run either life orb or lumberry lumberry to prevent burns but i like life orb more for the damage its ability is cool because it puts up the sun which can help other pokemon but also it boosts attack stat as well and you should go max hp max attack adamant nature so what i really like about co ride on is it does have screech and swords dance so you can also lower the opponent's defense and play more supportive if you want to let's say you're a bunch of iron hands you, you can then easily transition to a support role and use screech to help the team out but you can also set up yourself with swords dance which is pretty cool too collision course is a fantastic signature move as it does double damage essentially when you're hitting it super effectively it has a damage bonus on super effective hits and drain punch for that sustain which is obviously going to be really good you could run flare blitz on it but that would end up killing you and it's not stabbed so i don't think it's worth it and it does have a bit of a limited move pool but that damage that cannot be ignored but i do think iron hands overall at the end of the day just ends up being a better pokemon than co ride on and one of my favorite raid pokemon is the raid cat berserker i made a video showing off four berserkers one shotting pretty much any raid in the game and it's honestly insane so i definitely recommend checking out that video the held item i like is lumberry because so i really don't want to get burned or confused because this is a pokemon that requires some setup but can be an actual beast so you want its ability steely spirit which powers up the steel type moves of all pokemon as allies so that's the hidden ability if you are with three other berserkers then your steel type moves are going to do an insane amount of damage which is pretty crazy and this is a pokemon that is harder to run in random battles for sure but if you are playing in a discord or something you can coordinate then this honestly ends up being the best raid pokemon in the game you want to go max hp max attack for me i went max speed but you don't want to follow that i went max speed because i play as a leader berserker which tries to get off taunt turn one so talking about the move set pretty much everyone's gonna be running sword stance iron head screech sword stance to boost your attack iron hand for that big damage screech to lower that defense by two i run taunt on mine turn one with my raid group and other people would run helping hand so berserker does end up being a big damage pokemon but also a big support pokemon too and i really like that and i honestly do feel like it fills that role much better than something like co ride on it doesn't have the stats like co ride on does but it's still an absolute beast and like i said if you can get the raid cat going with three others it's going to be phenomenal now for our last pokemon i want to highlight is charizard because i just think charizard actually has a solid build with belly drum because yes it does get belly drum and it actually ends up being the best physical flying type attacker in the game so with belly drum and citrus berry you're going to eat your citrus berry when you after use your belly drum which means your acrobatics is going to go from base 55 to 110 damage which is going to be insane with max hp max attack you're going to actually be doing a lot of damage and you want to have blaze on it and not its hidden ability because honestly the hidden ability is actually a net negative for you and it's pretty solid especially terra flying it can win some really hard six star raids you can even solo with it too which i made a whole video on that you definitely want to check that out 
but I think Charizard's pretty solid as one of the few Belly Drum users. There is to Titan, which I'm not a big fan of Ice types. Honestly, there's just too many weaknesses, no resistances. So you could run to Titan in a similar fashion, but I'm not a fan. Same with regular Hariyama, you would just run Iron Hands over it anyways. Now for our special attackers, and I think honestly the best special attacker is probably gonna be Myriadon. Myriadon with a phenomenal electric and dragon typing, and I do prefer running the electric Terra on it, but you could have two, one electric and one dragon. I like the item Life Orb on it a lot. You actually don't need Lumberry on this guy either just because Electric Terrain makes it so you can't go to sleep, which happens to be the ability. You have set up Electric Terrain, which increases the damage of Electric type moves, and it also boosts your, your special attack, and it makes it so you can't go to sleep as long as Electric Terrain is up, which is actually really great. Modest Nature, max special attack, max HP, and something really cool about Miradon is that it does get metal sound so you can lower their special defense by two stages so you can do that a couple times parabolic charge is essentially electric special drain punch which is really good unfortunately we don't have a good way to maximize our special attack stat so i really like the move charge charge increases our special defense by one stat which is actually pretty solid but it also doubles the damage of our next electric type move and I went full electric with this build here. And Electro Drift is gonna be our big damage dealing move. It's essentially the exact same as Collision Course of Co-Ride on. It's a 100 damage special move, electric type. And if it's super effective, it's gonna do even more damage. It's gonna double on that. So you got stab, you got double super effective damage, and you're gonna also have electric train and your abilities proccing off of more special attack boost and life orb. So yeah, Miridon's pretty cracked, honestly. Not too much else to say. You could put Dragon Pulse on this thing as well, but I don't think the moveset really allows for it. You could also put Charge Beam, but Charge Beam only allows for a 50% chance of getting that plus one special attack boost, which I think is honestly a waste of a term. I think you're just better off using Metal Sound to guarantee their minus six, and then you hit a Charge, and then you hit an Electro Drift to do massive damage and potentially one shot too. Now for another amazing special attacker is Iron Moth, which I actually do recommend having a Fire Terra and a Poison Terra Iron Moth. And I like the item Lumberry on it just because it is easily disrupted by Thunder Wave, by Spore. So definitely get like a Lumberry. But if you want to go on the damage side, you could use a Life Orb or you could use a Booster Energy too. And you want to go max HP, max special attack on this guy. And Fiery Dance, Acid Spray, Overheat, and Sludge Waves are the moves I really like on it. And my big thing with this Pokemon is acid spray acid spray is a phenomenal move it is a 40 damage poison type move which is actually pretty sick but it lowers the special defense stat by two stages which means it actually works on a raid pokemon shields so that's actually such a unique fantastic move of course it doesn't work against steel types or they have some ability we're immune to poison but still a fantastic tech move sludge wave is going to be our big killer for poison Fiery Dance is going to increase our special attack stat by one as well. So we can use Acid Spray to like lower the Spadef. And then after the Spadef gets lowered a bit, we can start popping off with Fiery Dances if they are weak to fire and then increase our special attack further. And we can just essentially spam that and win. If you want to have a tactical nuke, Overheat is going to be that move as you'll try and go for a one shot. But there is a lot of other options you can run on this guy. Energy Ball is another pretty solid move if you want to go down that route. I just have pretty good moveset overall, but the most important part is Acid Spray. But it also does get Metal Sound, but Acid Spray, in my opinion, is a lot better. Next up is Fluttermane, who is an absolute glass cannon of a Pokemon. Fantastic base special attack, special defense, and speed at 135. But I believe it has like 55 HP in defense stats, so pretty bad in that case. So if the Pokemon you're facing does have some sort of physical moves, then this may not be the best choice for that. And I do recommend making a Ghost and Fairy Fluttermane because they're both going to be really strong with a little bit of different move sets. I recommend Booster Energy just to get that extra attack boost because we're already going to be rocking that Modest Nature Max Special Attack. And I actually say Max Spadef just because our HP stat is so low, you're better off investing in Spadef because if you're facing special attackers and yeah, you increase your HP a little bit, you're still going to get probably bodied because it's just so low. So invest where you're best. And Protosynthesis, of course, will increase our uh, special attacking stat because we have booster energy or if the sun is out. So the moveset here is pretty interesting. And there's a couple things you can change here. 
Some, the most important, though, is going to be Fake Tears. Fake Tears lowers their special defense stat by two. Essentially, it's going to be like Metal Sound. And Shadow Ball is going to be our best Ghost type move. But if you are running a Fairy one, you can replace Shadow Ball with Moon Blast. I think that is our big flex spot here. Draining Kiss is actually a must always because this works like Drain Punch. It's just going to be a Fairy special move and it's Stab. So this is going to be a good way to get that HP and sustain back. And the last move, I actually like Kanmon because we need a way to increase our special attack stat. And it does not get Nasty Plot. So Kanmon is going to be our best, which increases our special attack and our special defense stats. So overall, Flutter Main can be really tanky on the special side. But if you do get hit by a physical move, you're dead. But hopefully you have killed them by then because this Pokemon is an absolute monster in those stats. And our last special attacker is Godingo, who's phenomenal typing with Steel and Ghost. I do recommend making a Terra for both Ghost and Steel on it. It has a Life Orb, which is a great item, of course, 1.3 attack damage boost at some life cost, which actually doesn't really matter. We're going to go Modest Nature, Max Special Attack, and Max HP. And his ability, Good as Gold, is phenomenal because you can't be status, so no Spore, no Thunder Wave, and you also can't have your stats dropped either, so it's going to make this Pokemon an absolute beast. This Pokemon has a phenomenal moveset as you have both Nasty Plot and metal sound so you can boost your special attack by two drop their special defense by two as well so you can actually play in a more of a support role or a damage role which is really nice flex shadow ball is going to be the best special ghost move and you have some options with the steel move i like steel beam because steel beam yes it costs 50 percent of your life but 150 steel move and if you have terra steel on top of that you're going to be shredding so hard so i do recommend steel beam it's a little bit more suicidal but it doesn't guarantee that you're going to be dead but if you don't want to use that you can run make it rain as well which is the signature move it will drop your special attack stat by one stage though so keep that in mind but here i like to greet a little bit more of a godingo just because you can easily one shot if you're plus six special attack and they're minus six special defense you are going to be one shotting with steel beam that's for sure and now for our support pokemon i think grimstar may be the best overall support pokemon your terror doesn't matter too much but i guess fairy is going to be better than dark overall and i like the item light clay because grimstar is going to be setting up reflect and light screen for us and we're gonna have the ability prankster to give us priority with these screens and we're gonna go max hp max special defense with a plus special defense nature minus special attack uh nature and light screen reflect is going to be the main two moves we're going to use light screen and then reflect and then we'll be good to go for the rest of the battle spirit break will be our one damaging move and will lower their special attack stat which is fantastic and it actually works through shields because it's a damaging move with a secondary action so yes when they have their shields up you can continue to lower their special attack stat and fake tears will drop the special defense by two stages so if you know you only need light screen or reflect depending on the pokemon you face then you can spam fake tears if they are going to be special attackers on your team of course grimstarl is not as good if your team is all physical so keep that in mind our next support pokemon is an absolute beast which is umbreon and i like the item leftovers to get that hp sustain back on it and his ability synchronized is pretty good because if we get paralyzed or burned, then the opponent, the raid Pokemon, will also get paralyzed and burned, which is pretty neat. We're going to go max HP, max defense with a plus defense nature, minus special attack nature. And what I love about this Pokemon is it's one of the few Pokemon that has the ability to lower the opponent's defense and special defense by two stages because we carry both Screech and Fake Tears. And that's why this Pokemon is actually pretty insane. For our attacking move, I like Foul Play because it uses the opponent's attack stat against them, which is actually really good, especially against physical attackers. So Umbreon ends up actually being one of the best supports for doing damage in certain situations. Now, the last move is Helping Hand, which is the ultimate support move, of course. So I feel like with some Iron Hands or Zoom Rolls and you're done using Screech, you can Helping Hand them up and they'll do even more damage. But you do have some other options as well. Skill Swap is a phenomenal move too, as this will switch synchronize with their ability. Like Corviknight with Mirror Armor, you can't lower their stats. So you do that turn one, and then you can start using like Fake Tears or Screech on them to make it very easy to knock out. Snarl is another good move. If you want to have a move that lowers their special attack stat instead of Foul Play, you can use Snarl, but you will be doing less damage. But you know, BR support Pokemon damage is not a priority here for us. And next up is Magnezone, which is like a combination of both Umbreon and Grimmsnarl with both of their strengths put into one Pokemon. 
And I do recommend the item Light Clay here because Magnazone is lucky enough to get both Reflect and Light Screen, which is phenomenal. So it does the Grim Snarl job great. And you also get Metal Sound and Screech, and Metal Sound is just a slightly worse fake tiers, has a chance of missing, but absolutely fantastic that it gets both. So I actually go max HP, max special attack, modest nature, because this is like a offensive support with fantastic defensive stats. Its best ability is going to be analytic because Magazone should be the slowest Pokemon on the field. So we're going to be getting a 30% damage boost to our attack too. You could run sturdy, but I don't think we're going to be in a situation where we're going to be one shot from full HP too often. So the best way to build Magnazone is you're going to either have Thunderbolt here or you can run a move like Flash Cannon. You want one or the other, probably one that matches your Terra type. And then you're either going to have both Reflect and Light Screen or both Screech and Metal Sound. And then you're going to pick one of the other moves that you didn't pick. So in this case, I picked Reflect because I have a bunch of Pokemon Light Screen already. So I have Reflect up and then I also have Screech and Metal Sound to both help special attackers and physical attackers out. But you could do light screen instead of reflect, or you could do reflect and light screen with screech or just metal sound. That's going to be up to you and how confident you are in your team building and your team that you play with or with randoms. And then our last support Pokemon here is going to be Blissey. Your Terra type does not matter with Blissey, and I do recommend Leftovers for that HP. Now, Blissey's stats are literally off the charts right here. Insane. Max HP. And I actually go max defense on Blissey because we already have an insane Spadef stat with that HP, which means we're never going to die from a special move. We are afraid of dying from physical moves, so I do recommend bringing Blissey if you know the opponent is going to be more special. But they do happen to have some physical moves that are not full-on physical. Then you're definitely going to want some EV in that defense stat, so highly recommend maxing that defense. You could run a more defense nature too. I put in Spadef right now, but that is up to you. I like the ability Healer because Healer has a 30% chance of healing the status effects on your team's Pokemon. So that's really good. After one full turn, there's a chance the heal could just go off. So that's fantastic. Now, you may notice I'm not running any damaging moves on Blissey because Blissey is really not going to do any damage at all. And Blissey is going to win by making sure the team does not die and by boosting their attack. And there's so many different move options on this that we really got to go through them all. Right now, I'm using Charm, Helping Hand, Heal, Pulse, and Skill Swap. Skill Swap, as I mentioned on Umbreon, is such a nice tech move in certain situations. You don't necessarily need it, but I just wanted to showcase it. Heal Pulse is going to be your best healing move. You're going to do a 50% heal to any Pokemon on your side. I like this move a lot more than Life Dew. Life Dew is a full team heal, but it's really low on the heal. And here's the reason why, like, you have Cheers. Cheers do way more healing and the heal status effects. So heal pulse is actually unique in that way. And there's no move like heal pulse in my opinion. Because like one Pokemon that is a low, you don't want to use a cheer to heal the whole team because it ends up being sort of a waste and you only get three cheers. I'd rather have one heal pulse go off that direction and fully heal them. Helping hand is great, obviously. This is how you're going to make it so your team wins fights. And charm to lower the opponent's physical attack by two stages. That's going to help out you a lot personally and the rest of your team out. But there's a lot of options that you can run. Soft Boil to heal it up your HP by 50%. If you need that, is always a great option. Light Screen to increase the entire team special defense stat, which is going to be good. As I mentioned, Life Dew is an option. I mean, you could use Tail Whip. But I would not honestly recommend that. Sweet Kiss, not that great. And I wouldn't recommend Defense Curl. But there is a lot of solid options on Blissey. But I think this is like the one Pokemon you don't want any attacking moves on because your goal is to make sure no one else dies and you're always going to be cheering. You're always going to be supporting and paying attention to your team's life bar more than the opponent's. Well, guys, that is the ultimate raid guide for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Let me know if you have any other interesting builds in the comment section below. And I'll catch you guys next time with more Pokemon action. Definitely leave a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you're new. Catch you guys next time. Peace out and have a good one. <laughs>